Check out my brand new sound design course along with all of my samples and presets by using the links below. So I got a message from a Kling Music community member asking me to remake an Avicii preset. And they sent me a demonstration video on YouTube of someone playing that preset isolated by itself from a synth called Zeta. I believe the preset was called Crispy Arp. But apparently that synth isn't really available anymore and I never really see people use it. Avicii used it all the time, but since I had that preset isolated like that, that allowed me to really dial in the sound for you guys. So if you want to download that preset for Vital, you can check it out below along with a couple of others I'm going to remake there. And throw in there as well just so you don't get one single preset when you download it. Probably three to five. And dialing this in took me a little bit of extra time, but it was good because I was A, being it exactly to the main one. So it took a little bit more time than usual because I had the exact reference, but at the end of it, it worked out really well because this is a very versatile preset. You could probably go ahead and make some Avicii type of songs with this, but I could see this being used in future bass, definitely like progressive house and anything that has a lot of layering involved, this preset is the perfect lead preset for it. So I'll be going over as much as I can with this. I'm not going to get surgical and tell you like the exact numbers. If you guys want to check out the preset, which I recommend that you guys do download that, download that. And then if you want to follow along with kind of my mindset of how I made this and things like that, we're gonna go ahead and hop into this. So real quickly, here's an overview of the preset. The tone knob down here gives, you have two main variations of this preset. So we have the main version. But if we turn the tone knob, it gives it a lot more energy. You hear it a lot in future house songs, maybe like Lucas and Steve think or anything progressive house, even like Elenium. The way that it's done, Elenium does the same effect, but in a different way though. So if we turn the tone knob, the sync is going up. And I'll go into this a little bit when I remake it for you guys, if you want to stay for that. But if we turn the tone knob, so here it is before. But go up. It adds that like high energy. It's not an octave. I always thought it was an octave on top of it. And it adds this like high end, almost aggressive, annoying, maybe like a, like a vocal type of effect as well, maybe. But you could find a sweet spot for this and I guess make it your own, but you can kind of have your own variation. And if you want to access the vibrato, so this is no vibrato. And you don't have to use a mod wheel on your MIDI keyboard if you don't have one. You could just set it right here in the middle and it'll stay like that. So I'm going to explain this from a basic level. So if you're new to this, it's going to be perfect. But if you're not new, I think you can get a better understanding of it. Rather than me just saying like square wave, sine wave, I'm going to explain it in a better way to where you can use it outside of just this example. So we're going to start off here, obviously default saw wave. So in a synth, we have we have a bunch of wavetable options, X, Y, Z, but for the most part, we're going to be using the basic shapes. And when I explain the basic shapes, I like to think of this as the main colors. So if you think of a rainbow or maybe like the red, green, and blue, I think those are like the main colors or anything, like one of the primary colors. I'm not an art expert, as you can tell. But if we think of the main primary colors, there's only a handful, then everything else is made from that. And the same thing goes with synths and the basic shapes, the basic waveforms, I should say. So we have a sine wave, we have our square, and then we have our saw. We have a couple of other variations. This one's like a distorted sine a little bit. We have the triangle, which could be a mix between a saw and, or a sine and a saw. And we have some variations of the pulses, like half pulse, quarter pulse and things like that. For the most part though, we have our sine, saw, and square. The sine is our softest one. And we have our saw wave. And then we have our square, which the square is kind of like, it gives you that video game type of sound because, because old video games used to use straight square waves for the most part. But for this one, we're gonna be using a square wave because Avicii's leads pretty much were always square waves for the most part, maybe some songs and layers and things like that weren't square waves, but for the most part, square waves are going to be that Avicii lead sound. And a square wave is pretty much just a distorted sine wave. So if we have a sine wave, very soft, no edges, completely round. Square wave is bang, straight down the middle, then back to the right. And this is a very edgy type of And if we distort a sine wave, we're pretty much gonna get that as well. But since we have these basic shapes, the sine, saw, and square, you can't, it, just using those isn't really gonna be enough. Everything else in the sense, like the filters, the detune, 
envelopes, LFOs, everything else is going to play a big role in terms of what the sound sounds like. Everything else is really going to be determined on how you actually manipulate the sound in sound design, okay? So we can load in our square wave. We're going to add some voices of unison, which will multiply that waveform, give us some automatic width. If you're listening on speakers, it's a lot wider because we have seven square waves. And then we can add some detune. All right, this will give us some width and it'll also give us that detuned effect, which that's the best way to explain it is to just go like this. Do that a lot and you'll start to understand how that actually works, okay? So instead of just me doing everything in order on how it is in a real preset, let's actually get a little bit closer from the start. We can adjust our envelope. So envelope one is always going to be the main volume envelope. We can put that sustain down to make it a little bit more pluckier at the start. And then we can turn that release up, which will, if we let go of the note, that'll still ring out. And since we have a long release, you can hear them overlapping like that. So if we have a lead like this, we can put it to one voice of polyphony so there's no overlap. In some cases, you don't want those notes to overlap. Like if you have a lead synth, typically you don't really want the lead to be clashing with notes that were played before. And like I said, the way that I made this sound wasn't through me typing in these numbers. I have to make that clear because in tutorials, I could just say seven voices, nine, volume down a little bit. We can do something, we could, I could do that. The way that I made it was just by using my ears, referencing that original sound. So I had this in here the whole time from that video, which was fantastic. But it's also like, I gotta make this thing right. You know what I mean? So let's go down to the random. We could put this to seconds. And the random function inside of Vital, from my, from my knowledge and just from using it a lot, it's pretty much an LFO, but it's randomized and you can control a lot of things. So there's, there's a couple of different styles that the way that it'll operate. But if we put this seconds to 0 0.001, so the smallest amount, keep it in per lin, we can hold shift, which will make it bipolar go both ways when we actually put it onto something. If we hold shift, we can click it over, drag it onto the pitch, and this is gonna sound horrible. Yep. But if we drag this down a little bit, a very small amount, let's say, still sounds bad, put it to about 15 or so, we can drag a macro in the middle of that circle. So we're pretty much gradually mixing in that small amount. It, it kind of gets a little detailed like that, but we're pretty much mixing in that amount. So if we go full on that, still sounds bad, but just a little bit though. You hear like a little bit more grit right there. And you could do the same exact thing in the LFO. So Avicii obviously, I don't think the synth was out when he passed, so obviously he didn't, didn't do that. But you could do the same thing with an LFO, put it in the seconds sync mode and do a similar thing. But the random is great because it's different every time. So that's why I like to use it. And it just sounds a little bit different from other synths as well. Turn that down a little bit. So giving us a little bit of that grit and right away. So next, if we listen back to this, there's a lot of white noise right there as well. You guys can hear, you can hear a lot of white noise on the top end. Pretty plucky as well. So we're gonna add in some of that bright white noise right now. We're gonna route this to filter two. We have two filters down here. We can route this to filter two. We're gonna low cut the white noise, put that resonance down, and then we're gonna get this out a little bit and we can adjust this to what we think sounds good. And if we turn key tracking on, this will give us a little bit of a different tone when we play it across the keyboard, okay? So you can see the filter move ever so slightly. And we can make a second envelope shape. I like to do sec separate envelopes just so it's a little bit different, not all relying on this first envelope. You could but I like to have a little bit of variation and things like that, okay? So we can make something like that, similar to the first one, but not exact, long release, and we could throw that onto the white noise. And this is gonna give us a, like a bright punch because like I said, it's giving it a little bit of a plucky shape. Oops, or yeah, I put envelope two onto there and I accidentally put, I accidentally put LFO one onto that, but put envelope two onto that. That still sounded cool though with that white noise, but. So the white noise is giving us that bright plug at first, but going back down gradually in volume. And I adjusted everything 
perfectly in the preset. So I recommend that you download that preset. But if, like I said, if you're following along, you can. I think you can take a lot away from this. And if we listen back to this, so I went ahead and added a second layer. We have a. I put. I used a sine wave, and I put some voices of unison on with a little bit more detune. Turn it down a little bit. It gave us a little bit of width. And then now let's go to the effects. We have our EQ here. And inside of Vital, we could use a filter like this. Throw an envelope on. Something like this. That would work perfectly fine. But sometimes inside of Vital, if you run too much volume into a filter, it adds distortion without actually putting the drive up. So I like to use the EQ actually as that filter effect. So first, let's give this a low cut. And then we could go and we could go back to the high band. We're going to take that resonance down to zero. Put the cutoff about halfway. We'll be good. And then for envelope three, we're going to clear that from that filter. Once again, we're going to make a similar shape. You could use the first envelope to make everything more cohesive, but I like to have everything. I like to have everything be a little bit different. So now we have that filter back cut off on that high band right there. And then let's throw envelope three on that cutoff. Adjust this a little bit. And then in the preset, I put a macro onto that envelope. So we can drag this right in the middle dot right here or over here where we put it. And we can mix in how much the envelope opens up the filter. So if you're like, ah, it's way too bright, you can knock it back a little bit. And I would name this envelope amount. Or you can call it cutoff if you want to. And we could drench this thing in a lot of reverb. All right. I thought there might have been a saw layer, like a straight saw. We could maybe do some vibrato. This one sounded like there was some vibrato right here. And you don't have to use LFO2. I just messed with this one. So I'm just going to go with LFO2 and put this on the fine tune right here. So this is the fine tune, the in-between tune. So this is one. One here equals 100 here, okay? And we could shift, click, drag LFO2 onto that. And make sure you route that out of filter two, but I actually didn't include this in the final one. It sounded like there's a little bit of saw. Couldn't really tell. You can leave it there if you want to. I actually have that saw in there. If you, in the other preset, I didn't take the saw out, but if you wanted to, you can turn that saw on in the original preset and the preset that I made it at least. And this one's pretty close to the original. There's a little trick that I learned that Elenium used when I was making the Elenium feature bass pack, Elenium did this. If we take the sync knob right here and right away, you're gonna be able to hear a... Uh... Elenium does that a lot. If you no Elenium, you're going to recognize that like screeching type of lead. But look at this. If we put a macro onto the sync, we could maybe put it to 0.15. We'll do it till it sounds good. A lot more energy. And you could do whatever you would like for the amount. Really cool. So this is pretty much like the, the straight preset. And if you want that variation. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention was the vibratos that are in the mod wheel. So for vibrato, typically I'll put it on the 16th and we could put this onto the fine tunes of all of these, okay? We can shift click onto the fine tune of that sine wave. Or if you wanted to, you could go to the advanced and drag that onto the master tune as well, just for a little bit more. And then I like to put a macro onto all of those so we can control it with the macro. And of course, if I'm making presets, if I'm just making it for myself, I may not need to do that because I know how to adjust things. But in terms of a preset, having a macro like that that tells you exactly what you're doing is very handy. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the Avicii Crispy ARP preset. I did my best to match that one, but it's a very versatile preset. 
like I said, you don't have to make a Vici song with this. You can make, you can use this for any type of genre, if we're going to be honest. Anything that requires a lead, I think this is very useful. So if you guys liked it, let me know down below and I'll talk to you guys later.